Hello and welcome back to the Inverted Castle, a Metroidvania enthusiast podcast. I'm your host, who I hope is shaped like a friend, Eric Fox, and joining me as always is the man in my mirror, Thomas Blight. I'm working on changing my ways. And I'm not, so I guess that works for the whole opposite theme, but uh, we're engaging in a bit of self-reflection as we uh, look back on our time with Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, developed by HAL Laboratory, Dimps, and Flagship, and released back in 2004 for the Game Boy Advance. I don't know, this game is Kirby. Are you familiar with Kirby before this game, Tom? I am. Or was it am <laughs> yeah am we're, we're we're playing with the time stream a little bit so I guess I might as well say that this game reminds me of better Kirby games is kind of the problem <laughs> <laughs> that is that is I think the core of my feelings about this experience is that I feel like they have done it better in other games not quite the Metroidvania components oh. of it. I might be able to argue that, but I think we can get into that a bit later. I think we should probably like establish what it means to be a Kirby game uh, off the bat here, which yeah. is fairly you know simple, charming designs, uh, platforming, definitely the copy ability and the myriad uh, things that you can just kind of play around with in what are usually fairly tightly designed levels. I mean, Kirby makes it pretty weird. Sometimes there are ones where he's a... a- ball that you have to draw a course for or there's a uh, he is a golf ball you have to play a course for yeah but yeah the, generally the the like central kirby canon is the like being able to f- to suck things up being able to float copying abilities a general like low level of difficulty you can kind of just spring breeze your way through yeah Kirby sometimes is like, I don't know, baby's first Mario a little bit. Yeah, although I I, would, I think just platformer in general, because uh, very rarely are you actually stomping on people unless you get that specific power up. Uh, That's fair. It's not that similar to Mario in particular. But it's it's definitely like a very chill kind of... you. It's a game where you have infinite jumps. So the the, the uh, existence of pits is very rarely that big of an issue. Although, depending on your power-up, you might be able to uh, screw yourself over. <laughs> I definitely did do that once. Oh, only once. Oh, man. <laughs> How fortunate for you. But no, uh, in this game, uh, they kind of take that platformer like style and just kind of mazeify it where different paths will like branch out and you just kind of follow different like uh take one door instead of another which will lead to a different path and sometimes lead back on each other and it becomes a sprawling maze rather than a uh like a, a linear like path with different divergences yeah and there are some ability gates um so the ability gates all make use of the copy ability right so you have to bring the right ability to the gate Generally, they're available pretty near, close nearby, sometimes in the same room. Usually in the same room, especially if they're required to progress. The optional goodies here, scattered here and there, or, or the like, optional paths, will occasionally require something from a while ago or very specific abilities, but they're generally within a room or two if you need them. Yeah. Yeah, although sometimes you can't always go back, which is... A little annoying. There are there are one way gates, but some of these abilities are like the hammer, which will you can stomp the uh, these uh, switches or like stumps basically, or it can break certain blocks that other abilities can't. Uh, sometimes you just need speed, so wheel or missile will get you there. Occasionally you need to light a fuse, like th- th- that's a classic Kirby staple uh, with fire or burning. And then there's also. Uh, cutting the string to drop platforms. Yeah, which you need a bladed weapon for. You, and usually cutters are like just kind of hanging around in the same room. Yeah. Like all of these are fairly like fairly linear puzzles. It's not like you need to like juggle ab- abilities because you realistically can't. There's there you cannot bank abilities or anything. It's just the one you got and if you get hit, uh you, you can quickly swallow it back up, but otherwise it'll just kind of bounce away and you're it's gone. Yeah. yeah. Or you can intentionally pop the ability out of you if you want to switch with the select button. 
Yeah. Um, and particularly the gray blocks. Rich gray blocks, because there are actually a couple. <laughs> the ones without a star on them. Okay, yes. The ones that can be broken by... Uh, what can they be b- broken by? Hammer, missile, and uh, technically smash, because smash includes a hammer. And yeah, smash. Smash is actually a really cool ability, because it's just all of his, all of his special moves from uh, melee. They, they kind of like work their way back into this game. So Kirby gets his uh, up B and uh, turn to stone, and also uh, hammer and a uh, neutral air. Yeah, I mean, I'm irrationally angry about Final Cutter not being part of Cutter in this game, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's part of Sword. It's fine. Yeah. And apparently that's a thing that continues on from from here. So is this game not canon in your eyes, because they, f- they messed up Cutter? No. Your, fa- your favorite ability? It's fine. Okay. Okay. Like, listen, you're getting irrational on me here. I'm, I'm just trying to placate you. I mean, so my general issue and why it reminds me of better Kirby games is that I feel like almost all abilities are greatly diminished from something like Kirby Superstar, where oh, yeah. every ability has multiple things that you can do with it, as opposed to it basically just being like fighting or smash yeah occasionally uh, an ability will have a different dash attack or if you hold up it'll do something different but a lot of the basic things that used to have uh different abilities are now just fairly just they do the one thing like uh plasma is just a little ball of uh electricity around you you can't like charge it up and form a uh, projectile yeah, or like the f- uh, flame ones have been split into burning and fire. Yeah, so burning is your dash attack where you become a fireball, and the flame ability is just breathe fire. That's it, right in front of you. It's it, it, it was annoying. It wasn't like um like odd because like I knew in my head like I should be able to do this other thing, and only later did I discover the burning ability. Like ah, that's yeah. where it went. Those bastards. That was my general problem was like my, I I don't know, muscle memory for (laughs) Superstar was just like, okay, I should be able to like running jump with this ability and do this. And then it's just not there. Yeah. And, and Cutter only having its weak projectiles and not being able to go through the screen at all with its, the final Cutter, the, the big up jump, uh, which uh, you can use to like go through the stage and hit switches with, but only if you have sword and not cutter anymore. Yeah. Fun. Or if you have smash, it's just on smash. Smash is the best ability, but it's like a special one that you have to like beat a specific mini boss for. And there'll be occasions where if you want to get goodies and or progress in different places, you'll need to pitch it for like burning. Yeah. So talking about what minimal plot there is in this game. Oh man. Hey, uh, challenge mode. Can you explain the story in one breath? Um, there's a mirror, evil Meta Knight and evil Kirby came through, they broke the mirror, bad things are happening. Yeah, that's the setup. <laughs> that That is actually probably more detail than you get from, from if you let the, uh, the uh, attract mode play on the title screen. <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's just this cool mirror, uh, I guess, is one of the, one of the myriad things that Grant wishes or, like, give people stuff. And, uh, yeah, then gets bad. And Meta, Meta Knight's there, but he's most, for the most part, not not sir, not appearing in the game until the very end. Yeah, he gets to be a, a thing from the magic ability. Oh yeah. Oh, I did not play around with the magic ability. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can only get it in fairly limited circumstances, um, usually from beating a mini boss. And yeah, it'll uh, do a roulette, and one of the the items on the roulette is summon Meta Knight to damage everything on the screen. After which you are left with no ability. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so I think I did that once and then realized, okay, I just never want to not have an ability. Because usually when you're fighting a boss, you'd have something that fights good. And you don't need to turn everything into, I like, food. <laughs> there are some abilities that I would consider worse than having uh, no ability for some of the bosses. Uh, in particular, burning is a little awkward and deals really low damage. Burning, uh, yeah, like y- you can get several hits with it, but unless you're like crossing through them all the way, you end up just kind of inside of the boss because you are the projectile. It's 
It's better than not... I would say it's better than trying to fight it with Puffin, but it does take a while. Eh. I I frequently jettisoned my burning and used the en- enemy's uh, stars against them. You used a salve and uh, you were able to fight once more. <laughs> uh, anyway. So it, like, so it is maze-like. It's also somewhat interesting in that there is... There's end points that you're ultimately trying to get to, right? This isn't... I mean, trying to think of a better way to phrase this. I guess it's more like, imagine if there are several courses with the start point all being the same point and leading to towards an end. They are interconnected, but you don't really have to use the interconnection that much. I don't know. Yeah, like, uh, you will have to, like, follow the same path to get to a branch where it'll go to either the area three like zone or it'll go to area two or whatever. Uh, but you will often get kind of like, you're trying to like use the map, which uh, that's one of the, the, the collectibles in this game is, Oh, a map of the area. So you can kind of piece together where all the, uh, the rooms are located and like what paths you can go down. A lot of them kind of just end up in these like uh, linear termination points called goals, and they are in fact not your goal. You're looking for the boss, which is a, which is a different thing. But there are a lot of like just yeah. Uh, once you reach the end of it, you kind of just uh, get a little mini game to get extra lives, health, battery for your phone, which is a mechanic we should probably explain, and then you get pu- put back in the central uh, hub area, and you get to like okay, choose a new path. Right. Yeah. So let's talk about the phone. So this is actually a multiplayer game for four people. As part of the opening cutscene, Dark Meta Knight, the mirror version of Meta Knight, uh, hits Kirby with a sword and inexplicably Kirby is now four Kirbys. But uh, don't worry, we have the power of telecommunications devices. So (laughs) Kirby just already has the cell phone and can call up the posse while he's adventuring otherwise they kind of just meander and kind of do their own thing like they'll just go down paths like maybe get an ability here or there and die over and over again they're not going to make mm-hmm. progress unless they're a human controlled player yeah and there are small occasions when you need them there are a couple of switches that they make easier to push although they also will just like mess around and not really help you with the switch sometimes so it's a mixed bag. They are AI controlled and you cannot direct them. Yeah. There's at least one block that you have to get them all to suck in order to move it. That was the last treasure I got. Uh, notably, not required to actually beat the game. Only if you care about 100%ing. Yeah, which I, I did 100%. I, I, know, it, I, I did not, and I'll ask you about it later, but... Um, it's nothing special. I did not believe it would be. Uh, so... So you have your crew, and but if you have a human-controlled player, you can kind of explore this game like asynchronously because there are very few places that actually are locked off like totally. You you don't get like ability upgrades. You can go anywhere from the jump basically. And I guess the interesting thing is, uh, we didn't play it with multiplayer. Um, if you're when you're in multiplayer, can you just like? make the other players come to you at any point? Yes, you can. I actually looked up the speedrun of a co-op, like, I think it was a, a GDQ presentation of it. But yeah, like, for the first little bit, one guy gets wheel, the the ability to go fast, and goes fairly far into the first and second area, while the other guy just kind of hung around and showed off different abilities until he got <laughs> missile, which is also a, a fast thing for like vertical movement. And then, yeah, just instantly got summoned to a branching point. They split off and started just like doing different things. Uh, every time you unlocked a warp zone or anything that would requ- require a cutscene, both players see that no matter what they're doing. So that can be really jarring. Fun. Yeah, but like th- the reason at least I decided like I don't really want to uh, engage with the multiplayer in this is that like the way to do it optimally would be to we would just not see half the content ourselves. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could also like go together and not that the bosses are any hard, but make uh, yeah. the bosses easier. Uh, co-op does actually add a bit of health to them, but in the same way that like, okay, yeah, just having two sources of damage is already going to make uh, this way easier. It just like, 
It'd be like uh, New Super Mario Brothers Wii, where we I think we could just get constantly in, in each other's way, and <laughs> like for as meager as these puzzles are, they would just even be completely sidestepped by just you could have smash and burning, and I think get through ninety percent of anything the game throws at you, which would make it efficient. But also we'd have to deal with scheduling, and that's just a pain in the butt. Yeah. And I'd have to probably play it on an emulator instead of on my 3DS. Exactly, because I, I don't think we can G, like link up through 3DSs remotely. Yeah, no. uh, although it is very easy to uh, hack your 3DS, I'm told. Mm. But anyway. So co-op is a thing that uh, otherwise like you just see these batteries everywhere, which anytime you call the crew, it'll eat up some of your phone. And if you do the super summon, you'll get a maximum tomato as well in case you need to get some health, but it eats up all of your charges of phone. Yeah. You can also use it to go back to the hub world. Oh, yeah? I never, I never use that because usually I'm on a mission, but you can, you can just uh, teleport back to a uh, home base. Yep. Useful, especially, I guess, if you're doing 100% just got the only treasure in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's what he got used for a lot. <laughs> A couple times when I went down a one-way path that I didn't realize was one way. It's just like, Ugh. Yeah. This this game takes the uh, mapping approach of not starting out with a map and having to find it. Yes. If you look at the map screen, it will give you a relative... From where you are relative to where the map is will be just a gray block. That's true. When you enter a new area, you can at least know that, okay, I should be heading up and to the right... But because this game doesn't have a contiguous world, it's just a essentially teleporter maze of doors that lead to other places and that vaguely line up with where the door was in the box that is the room to each other. It's uh, kind of hard to get that mental map of an area. I, I will admit, every time I went to a new room, I popped open the map to see, like, okay, <laughs> did I act like... Uh, sanity check. Did I get to the right room? Okay, now where am I going? Top left? Is it is it the left door or the bottom left door? Yeah. In particular, there's some of the map rooms that are not actually very connected to the world that they're in. I think it's Area 4's is actually just from a door in Area 1. And occasionally, even if you have the map, navigating is a bit awkward where... It'll say, like, oh, this place goes to Area 5, except when you get there, it's actually the one of the interstitial warp rooms, where, okay, yeah, once you've already been to Area 5 and warped back here, you can go there, but nothing you can do right now. In, in general, I felt this map was a little too abstracted. Yes, it, it's just a series of boxes. Bigger boxes for significant stuff, and otherwise, uh, it will tell you which doors are one way thankfully, but occasionally it won't tell you you have to go through a specific door in the next room, otherwise you're not in the right, uh, like, a room can have two separate sections that are completely cut off from each other. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you'll get to the right room, but not in the right way, so you can't actually go where you wanted to go. It reminds me of some of the, like, trying to map Legacy of the Wizard, where it'll be like, oh, this is connected to the next square but it's really just like there's a little path at the bottom right that goes to the or whatever yeah you don't you don't really want to be connect uh compared to legacy of the wizards maze like design <laughs> it's not a great look um other than that another aspect of metroidvania design that is kind of just not here is progression <laughs> there's very minor progression. You get warp zones, so to make navigation easier. You can find optional health upgrades. Yes, only three of them. Three total. To get, like, I think to a grand total of eight HPs, which is more than enough to kill anything that moves. And then I think that might be it for gameplay. Yeah, and then there's <laughs> you can you get the maps. The maps are actually pretty significant for progression in this because you you need the maps. The maps will tell you where the actual like end goal is to like fight the boss and get the shard of the mirror that you yeah. need. And then there's sprays and music, which I didn't realize until I got the music player as one of my 
fairly late treasures, you can't even use the music until you find the music player. You need to get the one treasure to unlock the other treasures. Yeah. Which is just a sound test. Yep. And the sprays are, you know you know how you have four Kirbys? Well, you can m- make your Kirby different colors. Yeah, like Ooh. pink and the other pink. <laughs> and a different shade of red. Oh, and red with a different uh, foot color. Yeah, it was, in terms of unlockables, pretty meh. Yeah, once I realized what was at, like, I kind of knew, but there was really no motivation to actually get all the treasures, because even with those, like, more than half of the treasures you'll see are still just, oh, there's a cherry in there in case you needed a bit of health or a one-up, because this is a game with lives. Oh yeah, it is a game with lives. Those lives also go away whenever you shut the system down. <laughs> very, very cool treasure to get a one up and then cl- call it a day. Yeah, that was kind of annoying for the when I was going through and doing hundred percent as well. Where it's like, okay, all right, what's in this treasure? And the answer is, it's an energy drink for two health or Great. Ba- battery cool. for the phone you haven't used in the past hour. Yeah. Yeah, it's it was really disappointing cuz like outside of the the maze this really didn't feel like a Metroidvania so much as a really like disjointed normal Kirby game. And I feel like like going back to Superstar, I can't speak for the, you know, whole game, but uh Milky Way Wishes in that game kind of did this style a bit better in that you did actually get progression in the sense of accumulating a wealth of power-ups because in that game you don't get your copy ability you just find statues to permanently have uh, new abilities to just hot swap at any time and it also had non-linear design of here's a star map pick any planet you want and you can kind of you know non-linearly get different power-ups as you go through the different stages it was cool yeah the same game also had the great cave offensive which this one has a lot of commonalities with that one I'm pretty sure the Great Cave of Offensive's map was pretty much one way. It was just one big loop. Yes, I think there were like a couple of branches where you could go through like a castle area or a different one, but I, I think they're fairly minor. Uh, mostly it's just get every treasure you see. Yeah, and the treasures in that were, I mean, they were not very interesting in that they were just things to see in a menu. Right, but it, it, it would still, the puzzles you need to solve was still like, you know, a bit easier in that you could have a, a, like your AI helper buddy would follow you. So you could actually have two powers at the same time without, I don't know, phoning a friend with a GBA link cable, (laughs) which is something no one had except for you. (laughs) I assume, (laughs) I assume you had four GBAs each linked up just in your house along with your giant GameCube keyboard. Uh, I mean, I had, it helps that I have two brothers We did actually have link cables as kids. Uh, I mean, we actually used the GBA GameCube link cables for Crystal Chronicles and very briefly for, uh, what is it, Legend of Zelda Four Swords? Not Four Swords. Four Swords Adventures? Yes, Four Swords Adventures. This is not a game I owned as a kid, so we never did the multiplayer. You you could have had it all. It's true. I could have had it all. (laughs) What you really needed was uh, four Game Cubes with GBA players and use those, <laughs> connect all of those. I don't think the GBA player supported the link cable. Oh, it most certainly did. Oh, did it? <laughs> I can say okay. for certain. Uh, there's an old LP of, or a Let's Play of the Four Swords Adventures where in order to be able, at the time, couldn't capture off of a GBA, so they needed to hook up all their Game Cubes to a capture device <laughs> oh. and play it that way. That makes sense. That's fair. Oh, man. But we're getting wildly off track. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Kirby, then. This game was entirely hampered by its uh, attempt at being non-linear Metroidvania style, and by not going far enough in that direction, I feel like it it just would have been a better game without it if it was just, like, the paths were more tightly designed and there's less backtracking through them. It is... It is a funny thing of like, I feel like it it has done a bad job at being a Metroidvania game and it's done a bad job of being a Kirby game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it did. It's an okay Kirby game. It's, yeah, it, it is still Kirby and Kirby is still very charming. 
it's just in the uh, pantheon of Kirby games, it's it just kind of ranks fairly low, I would say. Like, you, you, you get a better version of it, as well as a bunch of other ones, a bunch of other games, just in Sur- Superstar alone. Yeah. To, to say nothing of Kirby's Dream Course, the best Kirby game ever made. <laughs> yeah. What's better than golf? That, that's Kirby. Kirby golf, I assume. <laughs> You assume correctly. But uh, anyway, all of this, uh, all this effort you put in to get to the end of the story is, you know, I wouldn't say the most well-written thing in the world, but it, it, in addition to Dark Meta Knight, there is also a Shadow Kirby, who you'll run into at s- specific points on the map. He'll kind of, he, he kind of goes down like a chump. I don't know. Like, did he ever attack you? No, I, I, you know... So he's dark Kirby, but I kind of interpreted him in the same way as uh, I've forgotten what the name of Link's dark counterpart is. Ah, in... uh, Dark Link. <laughs> no, in um, oh. A Link Between Worlds. Oh, right. Uh, Ravio? Yeah. Where, like, I don't know. I feel like... Oh, spo- some... oh spoilers for uh, oh. <laughs> Link Between Worlds, by the <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah, spoilers for a completely different game. Oh, Ravio God. is Link's dark counterpart. Oh, God. Uh, where it's like, it's not that he's evil, it's that he's cowardly, and so he he doesn't adventure to save the kingdom, he just sells you his his tools so that you can save it. Yeah, that's, a, that's way more thought than they put into Dark Kirby, who, like, he'll show up and... He'll have a health bar, and before you can even blink, you'll hit a Maxim Tomato out of him, and he just skedaddles. Yeah, at, I, at some point I started thinking of him as, like, giving you those. And it's like, he just shows up, and he's like, hey, here's a Maxim Tomato, or this lollipop that makes you invincible. But you do have to kick him in the groin to get it, so. Yeah. Uh, he, he's like Eddie, but with a, a way more toxic relationship. <laughs> Eddie from Mega Man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as it turns out, he's just Mirror World Kirby, and the Kirby of the Mirror World is still trying to save it. And so after you get all the pieces of the mirror, and you fight Dark Meta Knight, and then real Meta Knight shows up and gives you his sword, which uh, it's a cool weapon. Yeah, the Master Sword. Not that Master Sword. Not that Master Sword, the other Master Sword. Again, references abound. Um... And then you fight Dark Mind, which is, I guess, the thing that made that in by being reflected by the mirror world made everything bad. Uh, he's an Eye of Sauron looking motherfucker, and you gotta beat his ass in like a five stage boss battle. Yeah, I mean, ever since like Kirby's Dream Land three, they've been big fans of the single eye on black ball enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think. Marx is uh, the exception from Superstar, I want to say. Was Mark in, Marx's M- Milky Way Wishes? Yeah, I think it actually goes back before Kirby's Dream Land 3, but I don't remember that much yeah. about Dream Land 1 or 2. <laughs> who who could? It, it was a dream. That, that's the thing. It's, it's very hard to remember dreams. But, yeah, uh, I managed to lose the sword during this fight. I made the mistake of uh, trying to summon all my boys. Okay. Um, which just made the fight more chaotic. It, yeah, I did the same thing, and then as uh, once they got got, uh, like there, it was some extra damage for sure. But if you want to keep your sword and to do so, don't get hit. You want to actually be able to dodge and not run into your your bros. Yeah. But yeah, no, that that the fight is not overly difficult, but definitely like the the highest spike in difficulty. It, it is the final boss, but it's not so overwhelming uh it's not like a secret bonus boss that i think some games have done yeah he's got some forms in in between a bunch of the forms they give you the chance to possibly get an item or you can just take the wrong path and get nothing <laughs> it's pick a path you have you have four drop downs you can't see what's down them be be lucky and if you have your bros you can get health and uh, share it via uh making out as per usual in kirby yep it's, it's a standard that continues to this day it's fine it's fine it, it doesn't awaken anything in me and then you fight the boss again which like is mostly the same except a bit of a uh expanded move set and it all culminates in a top-down shooter like a uh, a gradius like or a raiden galaga one of those where you're on a warp star and just firing which is also in Mil- milky way wishes because uh, you can you can tell where this game gets its inform in 
not information, inspiration. I guess that one was side on, not top down, but whatever. Oh, yeah, it's completely different then. Yeah, never mind. Yeah. Disregard that. Uh, but it does a cool thing where as soon as you hit the fi- like the land the final blow that would kill him, the credits instantly start like going over the gameplay, and you can still like keep firing at this guy to like get you know bonus hits as though it's uh, like the end of melee uh, Smash Brothers where you're just firing at the credits, and you can just kind of still play around while the credits are rolling. It's a it's a cool presentation type thing. Yep. I like it. I like it. I liked it a lot. It had a very good uh, note to end on, and so I decided not to continue playing after <laughs> the end. <laughs> and I did, and went for a hundred percent completion. You get access to the Master Sword, which solves every puzzle. The, the, there are a couple times when you will actually need to throw it away, which is annoying because oh. you can't get it back until you go back to the center. Oh no! So, uh, in particular, one thing that we didn't talk about was the mini power. I used that once, one time. It happened once. There, Yeah, there are only a very small handful of times that you need to use the mini power, but uh, when you're mini, you can't fly, you can't really do anything other than jump, uh, and you can fit through the small gaps. There are times where I had to throw away the sword in order to pick up the mini power, and I was like, oh, but I want my sword back. You can also just lose the sword. Like, I managed to lose it underwater, and you can't. You cannot inhale things while you're underwater. I gotcha, because that's just yeah. water. You just you just drown. So I just watched my sword bounce around endlessly in the water and was sad. Oh no! It's also one of the ways that I killed myself uh, using its down attack. Oh, oh, because it's just a slam, and then you went through. Yeah, it, well, I slammed into what turned out to be a bottomless pit. So yeah, I didn't die with that because obviously I didn't play the game with the sword uh but the missile power up if you once you explode there's like a cooldown where you can't jump and so i ran into something over a bottomless pit and then just kind of didn't do platforming good and navigated directly down a pit and just like oh and learned how dying works which is y- your live counter decrements by one a-, a new a new thing for this genre and uh, then you just kind of respawn in the same room, thankfully, but with no power-up. Not thankfully. Yeah. There was actually one puzzle where I also uh, had to reset it. Oh. There's some puzzles that you you hit uh, a bomb switch and it blocks off another path. Ah, uh, yeah. And it was just like, oh, I actually needed to go down that path. Uh, what's the easiest way to reset this? Well, I can't go backwards because this is one of the rooms that doesn't let you so i'll just jump down this pit <laughs> you uh, lose yes. the sword but you don't yeah nature's reset yeah you you don't get to keep the sword but it does save time so eh. yeah fair enough the bomb blocks that like change the terrain in ways that you can't really predict always which is by design you're you're supposed to be like oh cool and hit something too early and then only realize later that there's more to uh your options than just hit everything you see yeah and there's a couple ones where in order to get access to something you have to enter from the other direction Mm -hmm. Um, usually that's pretty easy because there's a, a um a shortcut nearby to it but one of the things about the way that the bomb blocks uh, change the terrain is it's actually pretty hard to tell that that's the case if you didn't see the bomb block create that terrain. Right. So like I think there was a part of World 6 that I, I did not notice that, it, that the bomb block had created that terrain. And for a while I was like, how do you get this chest? The answer is just come in from the other way. Like if you're just beelining to what you need to do, like it's fine. Like you can just like play this game like a normal like Kirby game. Uh, trying to like figure out how to get tre- treasure chests is occasionally just a matter of okay, I know vaguely how to do it, but the solution is more annoying than the reward is worth. Which I think, hey Tom, what is the reward for doing all of this effort? Uh, you get a screen that says you got one hundred percent. Oh, you got a, You got a pinup of Kirby? Yes. Is it? Was it? It's no. No. No, it's, no, no, it's not sexy. Why would it be sexy? That would because be that's a tradition. It's one of the worst traditions and a stain on our history. But God damn it, I want a sexy Kirby. <laughs> I mean, th- the way you share health with partners didn't awaken anything in me at all. <laughs> 
Oh, jeez. Listen, how far up the pan- how far up the Kirby do the pants go? All right. Uh, that, <laughs> that's yep. That that happened. <laughs> yeah, transition out of this motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, one thing we haven't really talked about is the uh, Mira enemies. It's like a door. So the doors are mirrors in this game. Yes, it, they go, they go whole hog on at least that design element. Yeah, the Mira enemies are a mirror door that is also a mole, I guess, um, because they burrow if they see you. So at some point you have to learn, oh, hey, I can hit these guys by like approaching them cautiously and hitting them with something long ranged. Or I think you can get in close with one of the fast abilities before they disappear, but it's very tight. Like, it's, yeah. like they almost get like invulnerability frames once they notice you. Which is annoying because, like, at first I thought, oh, I just need to get in there and hit up to, you know, use them as a door. But no, you actually have to murder them. Yes. You cannot use live doors. <laughs> These are real fake doors. Um, at some point, they were, you. it's required that you figured them out to get to World 9. Yep. Otherwise, I don't think they're actually that required. I can't think of any instances where they weren't just a side path to a goodie. They are themselves a puzzle to solve, and like, how do you approach? Like, uh, like it's not like they have a, like a vision across. Like, you you can you can get close enough without them noticing you, but occasionally there will be like a block to hide behind. But one of the very few things that will actually stop you from going through a door. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, some doors are just hidden behind blocks. So if you're destroying everything, you'll just find them. I had a surprising amount of trouble with radish ruins figuring out how to get into the rest of it from where I was. I see. I, f- I forget what number that is. I didn't really pay attention to the level names. That's eight. Oh, okay. That was the last one I did. Yeah. There's like two entrances, except one of them is one of those switch doors. Yeah. I found the switch doors kind of useless because of the big switches. Yeah, no. Uh, I think there's like maybe two, three places where you can unlock a shortcut, hit, hit a switch, and then a normally impassable door opens up somewhere, like, on the same screen, but again, it's one of those places where you come at it from a different angle. So, like, another, technically, another way path through, but because you can just kind of warp to any zone, you don't need to warp, or you don't need to walk between zones when you're going for 100%. You can just get to the zone you need. That's weird that, like, you... I unlock them and then never use them even once. Yeah, and and because you need to unlock them from both directions, they're not particularly useful. Uh, yeah, no, you you've already proven you can get there, and if you're being a good boy about it, uh, you've already gained all of the treasures or whatever you need through those paths, so you never have to go there again. And you were a good boy, right? You were a good boy most of the time. Most of the time. There were some places where I just left a whole bunch of... Like, I'll figure out how to get these treasures later, especially in 7, the ice castle. Yeah, ice ice zone, it's not great. It's the only place where you actually have to use the ice ability to do anything, which is like fire, except you can then kick the enemies you freeze. Yeah. Which is useful for one puzzle that I found. Not sure about you. Oh, there's another way around that. You don't even need to do that. You don't need, but like kicking an enemy will go through the walls to hit a switch, but obviously you can do other things because there are a lot of abilities, as yeah. it turns out. What was your favorite ability? Uh, my favorite ability. I mean, Smash was actually kind of a cool ability. Okay, outside of Smash, because it is just kind of the generic, like, it will solve a lot of things and also deal a lot of damage. It is just really good. If you're trying to go fast, it doesn't help you with it. But other than that, hey. Uh, I'm always a big fan of uh, Fighter. Fighter's a lot of fun because it it has a lot of things you can do with it. Instead of just being a one-trick pony, you can punch, you can uppercut, it has a dash attack. It's great. Yeah, yeah, and and the the few segments where they just like gave you a wheel and they're like, just wheel. There's there's nothing interesting here. Just go fast. Wheel is the fastest horizontal movement thing in the game. Uh, you just don't get many uses of it unless you, you know, keep it with you. I weirdly liked throw. 
but that was more of a uh, I a flavor thing rather than a useful thing because it doesn't actually solve anything for you, and then you always need something to throw in order to use it. Yeah, throw is one of those ones where it's just sun. It's somewhat of a pale imitation of a better ability in Superstar, which is suplex. Yep. Like honestly, probably why I like Fighter so much is that it's basically the same as it was in Superstar. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it it did not get nerfed or have its abilities stripped out. I, I would have liked there to be some way to, with Fighter, have a button combo that would do the throw thing, but, you know, <laughs> what can you do? Just, j- just have one ability that is every ability, which is mostly Smash, which is the best one. Yeah. But, yeah. I think that's pretty much all we can say about this uh i guess context zone we already talked about 2004 in the metroid zero mission another gba classic yeah i don't remember if we even mentioned this game being released in 2004 when we did that it yeah no i don't i barely remember it and i just played it so yeah this is a weird year this is a a year where there are two other nintendo metroidvanias (laughs) uh, because zero mission and prime 2 both released in this year yeah and yeah this one i would say barely counts it's a maze kirby it's it's an amazing mirror i just got it man (laughs) never mind this this game is genius so I've got a board game for you to play. It's called The Amazing Labyrinth. Is there a digital version? <laughs> there probably is somewhere. God, okay, well, that's going to be what we're playing next m- month. <laughs> but for yeah. the time being... Oh, sorry, did you have something? No, I was going to say, let's go to the stack rank. Yeah, for the time being, where... I know we, like, th- listen, we were hard on this game a whole lot for... You know, for, I think, rational reasons, but I think for a lot of it, it is just trying to fit this game into the mold of a Metroidvania, and it doesn't really do that well enough. And so for the purposes of a ranking of Metroidvania games, personally, I can't see it going any even higher than Metroid, which is, at the very least, a Metroidvania. Yeah. So I am going to put it above Banjo-Tooie, because at the very least, this one is, it's simple, and it gets out of the way, and even a bad Kirby game is still pretty charming. So this will be my new number 20 under Metroid for the NES. Yeah. Do I prefer the sense of discovery of Metroid, or do I think this is still more playable? Oh, this game is not more, yeah, this game is definitely more playable than Metroid, but at least it's a Metroid. <laughs> yeah. And I... also, as much as I hate playing it, it is very funny when it pranks you. <laughs> this game needed this game needed a bit more jank for me to appreciate. It should have been worse. It should have been either better or worse. Right now, it is just one of those games where we're just like, okay, well, the only thing to talk about are the nits, and they've been thoroughly picked. Yeah, I think... I think I'm going in the same place. I'm going in between Metroid for the NES and Vanjo Tooie. Oh my God! Stop copying me. I, I you're a regular debating Kirby. Putting it above, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know. How much of this is just me being like I've played better Kirby games? You're a cu- Kirby purist. The person who hasn't played a Kirby game since they re-released Kirby Superstar, <laughs> definitely a Kirby purist. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like well, yeah. This is this is your other podcast project where you play all the kirby games right yes clearly <laughs> compare and contrast actually i guess that's probably a lie when was epic yarn epic yarn is probably after they re-released superstar it was at the very least fairly close um then there's return to dreamland and uh forgotten lands and then a bunch like robobot and star allies wow there's been actually a lot of kirby games never mind i i disregard that i I'm talking out of my butt. Oh yeah, they make a lot of Kirby games. You can easily do an entire series on, like a podcast series on all of the Kirby games. And a lot of them will probably just boil down to, here are the abilities that are in it. You get Plasma, and Suplex, nice, and Bird, aw. But 
Anyway, enough talking about that game. Let's talk about that cool board game that you're gonna. <laughs> that's next, right? Yeah. No. Let's. That's definitely not a Metroidvania. Um, oh, I, I, I couldn't. I, how could we possibly know without it, analyzing it? The, trying to decide whether a board game is a Metroidvania is a weird thing. I don't. Yeah. I yeah. Don't that, that yeah. We need to be in the fifties before that happens. So I know you asked me for something that's janky. I always do, because, yeah, I, we need some trash. But I, I was actually going to go for something new and hopefully not janky. Okay. I mean, I suppose I could always change my mind. <laughs> Ad hoc, just instantly convince you otherwise, but yeah. what, what, what was, what's the game you're thinking of? Uh, I was going to pick something from late last year, uh, the Night Witch. Night Witch. Uh, is this K-N-I-G-H-T or? Yes. I've not heard of this. I, I know very little about it. It is somewhat schmuppy. Okay. Projectile focus instead of sor swordsy? Yeah. So it might actually end up being similar to Aquaria. Okay. But this time we're not underwater. Yes. We're in some sort of fa medieval zone. Yep. Uh, that's pretty much all I know about it. I, actually, I didn't look very deep into it. Are we sure it's not a board game? I'm very sure it's not a board game. Well, I hope I'm not going to be bored with this game, but that's going to be hopefully pretty good or very bad. Either one, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have something to talk about. Sure thing, but if you have something to talk about, feel free to contact us on our social medias. You can email us at invertedcastlepodcast at gmail.com, uh, find us on Facebook, same name as always, or on Twitter at Inverted Castle P. I think that's all of them. Yep. So, yeah. Thank you so much for listening. I've been Eric Fox. And I've been Thomas Blight. And remember, kids, if you don't like who you see in the mirror, punch it hard. <laughs> They'll feel it. Great. <laughs>